So today we're going to be talking with Alan Sparger from Red McCombs Ranches. Um, they've been having their sale for quite a few years now, and I enjoy going every year. It's a ranch sale. Those are my, my favorite types of sales to have. Um, this year the date got moved back a little bit because of um, everything that else has been going on, but I'm really excited to see some of the animals they have and what they have in store for this year. Me too. I always really enjoy this sale. So I know that Alan is working as hard as to try to make it as good as it always is, just with some social distancing in place. <laughs> All right, let's get started. Hi, I'm Molly. And I'm Jamie. And this is our From the Pasture with Hired Hand podcast. As the owners of Hired Hand website software, we've been developing websites and creating internet marketing strategies for livestock breeders for the past 10 years. The majority of our customers are involved in the breeding of registered animals, such as Texas longhorns, Highland cattle, horses, and white-tailed deer, where the pedigrees are very important. The From the Pasture with Hired Hand podcast examines many of the differences in raising pedigreed livestock for maximum profit. Join us and learn what we're covering today. So in today's episode, we'll be talking with Alan Sparger of Red McCombs Longhorns. Uh, Red McCombs has been hosting an annual or um, biannual ranch sale um, since about 1979, give or take a few years that they took off. Um, Alan, thanks for joining us. Why don't you start by telling everyone a little bit about yourself and your role with Red McCombs? Well, I started the Longhorn business actually when I was in college. And uh, when Red got in the business, he contacted us about buying cattle. And while he was at the ranch, I says, hey, who's running your deal? And he says, nobody. And I said, I want to go to work for you. And that was in 1978, and I'm still here. So you must love it. <laughs> Either that or I just, I just love the pain. I, <laughs> <laughs> So the date of the, the sale this year um, was originally in May, but we had to move it. Um, and the date of the sale is June 19, 19 and 20. 19 and 20. And uh, you know, we weren't sure that we would even be able to have a sale at all in May. So to be safe, we moved it. And now we have to operate under the, the regulations of the state and the county. And uh, that we're having a modified sale, so to speak. Um, and the location will still be at the ranch, correct? The sale will be at the ranch, just as always. The cattle will be there, the auctioneer will be there, and Hired Hand Live will be there because uh, bidders will need to go on Hired Hand Live to participate this time. I know we said that the sale started in um, 79. Do you want to tell people a little bit more about the history of the sale? Well, it all comes out of Red's fascination with with ranching and then with longhorns and he fell in love with them and being a marketer that he is he naturally went to having an auction and red didn't do just an auction red had to do the best auction and over the years i think people would agree who have watched him that he was master at marketing these cattle and of course that led eventually to the texas legacy that was a joint sale with the wild ranch and of course a different variation of that is still going on today. Very nice. You can definitely tell his heart's been in it for a long time. Well, it still is. I talked to him yesterday. He's 92 years old and still wanting to talk Longhorns. Well, that's perfect. That's good. So will he have a microphone at this year's sale again? I'm not sure whether he'll be there or not because of the, the virus. Uh, you know, he's he's at risk when he gets out. So I don't know at this time whether they're going to have him at the sale or not this, this next go around. Well, and his family, we'll have to. his kids usually come to the sale too. So hopefully they can make it this year. Marsha will be there. Marsha uh, runs everything now. And uh, Marsha's the one that uh, kind of put the brakes on whether or not we could actually have a normal sale. She's really in tune with the politicians and the medical people. Uh, she had talked to the Lieutenant Governor. She's on the board of MD Anderson Hospital. So she knows a whole lot more than most of us. And when I talked to her on Friday, we had a long visit about what we could and what we couldn't do. And 
had we um, only had the option of going with a regular sale, we would have been forced to cancel because of distancing rules, food handling rules, just all the things that we're all going through where we live right now. It, the fact that they're opening things up has not made it normal, so to speak. So we're going to try to do what we're supposed to do and still have a good sale where the both the consigners and the buyers will feel they've had an experience that was worthwhile to them. So just to clarify on one of your previous comments, um, the consigners will be bringing the animals to the sale. They're allowed to attend or encouraged to attend, but you're asking that anyone who's not a consigner tune in online and try to try to allow you to still have somewhat of a event at the ranch for the consigners, but the bulk of the people should be online. Yes, depending upon how you interpret the rules in place, we can either have 50 people or we can have 25% of capacity. Well, the tent that we have, uh, and we can't get a bigger one because it won't fit because of trees. Um, if you used uh, 300 people that we could comfortably get there, we can't get them there and distance them. But if we went 25% of that, obviously, since we normally have 300 people, it just wouldn't work trying to have a regular sale. <clears throat> Allowing the consigners to come, they're gonna come anyway with their cattle. Allowing them to stay and attend the sale uh, seemed to make sense. We can handle that many people. That's gonna be probably less than 60 people. They will have to distance themselves. And when we even feed them, we have to feed them in containers. We cannot have serving lines. So yes, the consigners have been given the option to be there. Not all of them will be there, but most of them will. At this point, I know most of the cattle will be there. I, I don't have confirmation on the cattle coming from Utah yet. They may or may not out of state. People were given the option to keep their cattle at home, sell them online, and then we would arrange reasonable and fairly quick delivery options for them. For the first time ever at this sale, we're organizing some haulers so that people will know that they can get to cattle. Wes Clark is helping us with that. So anybody that's concerned about uh, picking the cattle up, we will have it to where it'll be affordable for them to get their cattle home. Perfect, and we'll be sure to list Wes's um, phone number for those um, who are interested in and getting with him on hauling too. We'll list those in the show notes for people. You know, we're, we're plowing some new ground here and uh, hopefully we won't have to do this again, but everything from trying to have masks, hand sanitizer, uh, plenty of chairs so we can move people around. Uh, we're gonna have tables there to where groups, if you come in one or two in a car, we're gonna try to have seating to where you're safely distanced. Obviously people that wanna visit uh, we're not going to have them arrested if they try to do that, but we want people to do what they're supposed to do. And, you know, you can see if we have, let's say, 50 extra people show up for the sale that uh, shouldn't be there, it will create a big problem for us situating them safely. And the auctioneer for this sale, is it Bruce McCarty again? He's coming Bruce back? Bruce will be there. Uh, his regular office crew will be there. Our regular group of cattle handlers will be there. Uh, we will have three, three ring men there. One of them will help um, hard hand live. And uh, we will try to make the sale work as normally as possible. And we're also encouraging all the consigners to fill out a form that we've sent them uh, that will include any updated breeding tip to tip, but also some video that they can record in their pastures or their pens to let people examine the animals better ahead of time, uh, since they won't be able to walk through the pens on sale day. Now you will see the cattle in the sale ring, just like you're used to on, on Hired Hand Live. And uh, Molly, uh, you and Jamie, or whoever's there with Hired Hand Live can be up front and center. You can have the best picture in the house because we'll have plenty of room to do that. <laughs> and no rain this year, right? No rain. <laughs> I can't guarantee that in June, <laughs> probably not. 
<laughs> Love what you're hearing? Be sure to check out our pickup truck confessions. It's a video series where we hop in the truck or a rental car and interview a variety of breeders about what drives their passion for their livestock, how they got started in the breed of their choice, marketing tips, and more. And now back to the podcast. Um, so let's switch gears and uh, talk a little bit about the consignments, the exciting part. Um, so go ahead and tell us um, who some of your consigners are. If you have some new ones this year, who some of your regulars are coming back. We have a lot of regulars coming back. We have a great variation of cattle coming from these people from outstanding heifers to 95 inch cows, everything in between young cows, uh, mature cows that are well proven. Uh, Richard Phillip has a 95 plus inch cow, a cocaine lady cow that's just a wonderful cow. I bet against him when he bought that cow. Um, Mike Casey has brought a full sister to the heifer that brought $65,000 at our sale two or three years ago. Mike Davis has some premium lots. He has a heifer, a first calf heifer that's created a lot of interest. He's circulated pictures online. She has a beast heifer calf that'll knock your eyes out. And it goes on and on. We've put a, our sugar cow, which is one of our premium cows. She's going to be in the sale. She has a new calf by a young bull named the edge he's a drag iron son but um you know so many of the consigners come each year kurt twining um john heaver john always brings a large group of people unfortunately can't do that this year uh, but we have people that support us each year and we appreciate them and usually you know at least 20 of our consigners are regulars um, scott pace has cattle in the sale not sure what he's going to do yet it's kind of tricky for him uh, having those cattle exactly where he is getting them here or being able to guarantee uh travel for them after they sell uh, should know something from him this week the oregon cattle we think all of them are coming uh, the louisiana cattle will be here from dora thompson so you know most everything you see in the catalog it's going to be sold hal meyer will have a uh, substitute lot that's the only substitute that i know of right now as uh, molly said uh, there will be updates on hard hand live for horn measurements breeding information and new babies and uh, we'll work up a, a sheet that we will post on things like facebook and our website um, with these updates as people send them to us we want to be sure that people can have the information they need, especially since the catalog was uh, put together in February. So a lot of information you need is not in it now. So two of the folks you just mentioned, John Heber and Mike Davis, I believe they're also sponsors of, the, of some portion of the sale, right? Yes, Mike, uh, this is his third year of being the party sponsor, he and Holly. Uh, get right in the middle of that. It's wonderful having them. Mike is a strong supporter of the sale, bought his first cattle at our sale. John Heaver is our cheerleader. Uh, John, he considers this his sale. It's wonderful. He has brought a number of people to the sale who have bought first time buyers. He and his partner, Chap Hutchison, HH Cattle Company, they asked if they could sponsor breakfast on Saturday. So uh, we will have breakfast at the sale, of course, not as planned where we can be feeding 300 people, but uh, it's something that I'm sure will carry over to next year's sale when things get back to normal. But we do appreciate their support and their sponsorship. So do you want to take any, you, are, you, you talked a little bit about some of the standout consignments. Do you want to take any guesses at who the top sellers might be? Oh, you're not going to do that to me. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Well, you know, Mike Casey's <laughs> heifer. Um, that family has such a track record. One's got to believe that that heifer will create interest. Uh, people would buy that heifer sight unseen. Uh, Mike Davis's pair. I know a number of people are interested. Um, that 95 plus inch cow is just a gorgeous cow that Richard Phillip has. Uh, there are going to be people chasing her. But there's a lot of them in there. You know, there's, I've had people call me and they say, well, I've picked 20 
that I'd love to take home. Well, 20 out of 91, I consider that pretty good because we don't all like the same animals. And people that have large groups of cattle that they like, I'm flattered that we got that many. There's a lot of heifers in that sale. And uh, it's really hard to gauge, you know, which heifers will go to which buyers. But I think there's a number of heifers that are out of really pretty strong cows that it's a no brainer that people would want to add them to their program. How many of the, how many there, there's 91 lots total how many of them are heifer lots do you remember i haven't counted them you know last year we had like 40 percent of the sale was heifers it wouldn't surprise me maybe we have 40 percent this time i i don't know but of course i count a heifer up until a, a first calf heifer which would be you know as old as three years old with a new baby but there's going to be a lot of good young cattle there and this year on Friday, the first 40 lots sell on Friday, correct? And then right. we won through, through the end of the sale sell on Saturday. Right. You know, we could have done it all on Saturday, but we saw no reason to change the way we do business. It's in the catalog that way. Uh, people like it that way. So we just left it that way. And we'll encourage people again that are viewing through Hired Hand Live to share their pictures with you and with us so you can see everyone enjoying the sale at home. I know the last one we did, we got some pictures of some folks by a pool with their big screen TV. We had some folks having some cocktails while they, <laughs> while they watch the sale like they normally would. So it'll be fun to see everyone, um, you know, be, be participating in their different way. One thing I'd really like to stress to people is we would love to accommodate everybody. Uh, it's important to us to showcase the ranch, have people come and have a good time. Unfortunately, the way we have to do it this year, we can't welcome everybody to ranch. So those that are not consigners are connected to a consigner like a driver or a hauler that's with the consigner. Please watch it on Hired Hand Live and plan to do it with us next year in person because we cannot accommodate extra people that show up. We still would have to social distance you and chances are we'd have to put you outside of the tent where the sale is happening to where you couldn't see what's going on anyway. And it's hot outside the tent under the it sun. It would be <laughs> hot in June in Texas, believe me. So anything else that you want to share? Especially for you people that are from the North Country. <laughs> Anything else that you want to share with everyone about the sale or just anything in general, Alan? Well, what I would say is this, you know, we were faced with the prospect of canceling the sale or coming up with an idea to where we could still have it. And uh, I really didn't want to do just an online sale. I talked to Jamie uh, several months ago about that and I said, ah, oh, that won't work. Let's not do it. Well, John Marshall, prove that it could work. And uh, Marsha was probably leaning towards postponement till next year until I, I said, well, let me come up with some ideas. And I call Mike Davis. He, he has a perspective that's uh, often a little different than mine. And he comes up with some ideas that I think are great ideas. And that's how we decided, well, hey, let's get the cattle there. Let's let the consigners watch the sale. Let's get everybody else to go online and let's try to make it happen because uh, you and I know that the industry is hungry for something to participate in. And I personally think right now sales are very important in the promotion of the breed because right now we have no other way really to promote the cattle. So we're happy to be having a sale. Uh, we're sorry that it can't be an in-person type sale for everybody but we hope everybody has a good time anyway. Thanks so much for joining us today. We appreciate you taking time out of your day. Thank you, bye.